Hard Rockology Radio, new music from Charm City Devils. The song is called Shots off the band's latest release, Battles. And on our phone line from the band, vocalist John Allen. John, welcome to the Hard Rockology Show. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so you guys got your third album coming out, Battles. It's coming out next week, the 23rd of September. And had a chance to listen to this album, and definitely, in my opinion, one of the best albums you guys have put out so far. So are you guys excited? about how this album turned out. You're always excited, you know, when when you finally get to release a record, you know, that you put a lot of a lot of work into. I mean, you know, this this record was a you know, a year of our lives and you know, yeah, we're we're uh, we're stuck. We we hope that it uh we have high hopes for the for the record and hopefully it'll take us to the next level and you know, um we're gonna hopefully be out there touring for it for the next year or so and and yeah, man, we're we're fired up. Now, this is the second album you guys have worked with, uh, Skid Mills, now, as your producer on this album. So, is he pretty much pretty influential? The sixth member. Is he, like, the sixth member of Charm City Devils now? Yeah, man. I, I got it. You know, you could say that. I, he's a great dude, and, and uh, I think, you know, we vibe with Skid very nicely. I mean, he's, you know, he's part of the sound, too. He's he's, uh, he's really worked with us and developed, uh, you know, chemistry, I think. I think with the band, he's you know he's a he's a great guy, he's a very talented songwriter, guitar player, uh, great engineer, great producer. I mean, he's a really well-rounded musician, and uh, you know it's it's just it's just great to to be working with him again on on this record. The name of the album is called Battles, and I read a little bit about the making of the record, and it seems like each song has a particular battle. Um, whether it be um, a loss or love or pretty much anything or drug addiction. I mean, is that pretty much why the name of the album is called Battles and does each song definitely reflect a, a personal battle for um, the particular individual? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, in some in some ways, I mean, there's certain songs like, uh, like Shots, the first single was really focused on a, a particular friend of mine who's struggled with addiction issues for quite a few years now, and uh, so that that song, you know, has a focus. Others, it might be uh, more of a general term uh, or a general uh, outlook lyrically, like they tear it apart, has more of a, I guess the subject matter is just about the the unraveling of the American family and the, and the just the American way of life, I guess, and um, I'm talking about there, and, and yeah, I mean, just struggle in general. I mean, there's a, there's a, I guess a, a, a common thread throughout the record lyrically, you know, and that's that's really life. I mean, you know, sometimes things you know run smoother than others, but you know, we we each have our own little struggles and battles, like the every day, you know, whether they're big and big and small, you know. So I think that that can. You know, it's a common theme that that most people can relate to. Now, this is your third album, like I mentioned earlier. You had, of course, your first album, Let's Rock and Roll, back in 2009, Sins in 2012. So now making your third album, I mean, has it gotten any easier for you guys, or is it just as difficult or just as much fun as the first album was? So, I mean, after three albums, I mean, are you guys doing anything differently? Is Is it coming along a lot faster? I mean, or is the process pretty much the same? The process has changed over the years because of the, uh, you know, to a degree. I mean, the first album was was a lot of uh, a lot of the material on that record was was uh, written really before the final lineup of the band was put together. So uh, so really since then, you know, it's, it's been a, a kind of a different and, and a more collaborative band effort. I feel. You know that's probably why you know if if you if you're paying attention you might notice some sonic differences and along with with Skid coming on board too so you might hear a sonic difference between the first record and and Sins and then you know that continuation uh, through uh, the new record Battle. Now one of the things I got to ask you you originally started out as a drummer of course you played in right. a couple different bands Child's Play SR71. Okay. Right. Now, then you make the leap to being a singer, and I have to ask. I mean, was that something? 
Uh, I know I've read some some quotes by you where you never thought you were a good enough singer vocally, and you didn't think you could do it. I mean, what happened from those two bands to Charm City Devils, where you thought, you know what? Hell, fuck, I could sing. I'm going to go ahead and sing. I mean, what what exactly happened there? Well, I think just over the years, I had always kind of, you know, in high school, you, you can never find a, a, a lead singer, right? So I, I would I would sing from behind the kit all the time. And then in those those two bands you mentioned, I would sing backups a lot and uh, and lead here and there. But I think the the most overriding thing that happened was I, I, I was finally tired of, of really working on and waiting for a, a, the singers to kind of decide what they wanted to do. And I felt like I was kind of trapped, you know, by by being the drummer, you know, just the drummer or whatever. And I kind of thought, hey, you know what? I, I wrote this song called Burn, Baby, Burn. I thought it was kind of interesting. And I thought I was on to something. And I thought, screw it, you know, I'm going to take, you know, grab the bull by the horns and fucking go for it, man. And, and uh, you know, I thought if I didn't, go for it, I, I'd, I'd regret it, you know, the rest of my life, so I took a chance, and crazy enough, things started happening rather quickly after I started singing for the band, and, and, and you know, it's just like we went from being put on a big uh, radio festival to then signing with 11.7 Music not long after, so it, it's been it's been a crazy ride, man, it's, life is life is weird sometimes, it's a uh, in a good way, you know. It's so cool to be doing this because I don't know if I was still a drummer, maybe I'd I'd be over it by now. But singing is such a new thing for me that I'm, I really love the interaction and getting out there and playing playing live shows. Man, it's just it's just great. I'm, you know, I feel like I'm I'm getting better with every show and, and every tour, and, and you know, it's it's uh it's just a blast, man. Well, that's one of the things i got to say. Vocally-wise, you frustrate the hell out of me. And hear me through here, because listening from the first album, the second album, and the third album... It's, it's totally different styles yeah, on, a lot of, on a lot of the songs. So. Yeah, your, your style of singing frustrates me. Most singers have a basic style that you can sit there and say, yeah, I know who this is singing. And, and one of the things I've noticed on the new album is, I mean, maybe three or four different tracks where your vocals are completely different. Now, is that something that you've learned... Yeah, I mean, I guess it's deliberate in that I'm trying to sing what I feel best suits the song. You know, I'm trying to complement that the, the tune as well as how you know, how best I think my voice sounds on the on the particular track. You know, and I like I said before, I, with each record, I try to push the envelope. I try to sing higher on some tracks, you know, and and lower. So I'm, you know, my my vocals, I've been really fortunate through touring and and everything. Have, they seem to keep improving with with each record. I used to, when I did first start this band, going back to your previous question, um, I kind of was, was insecure about my my voice, and I I would mask it in a lot of like distortion. I I, I sang through like guitar distortion pedals and stuff like that to kind of make it interesting and give it bite. And now um, you know, I'm confident enough to kind of just get out there with, with no effects, really, and, and sing, you know, dry and and, uh, and go for a more natural sound. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's you know, it's an ever-developing thing for me. And, and you know, I, I kind of, I look to singers that I think are really great, like somebody like Axl Rose, and I remember, you know, hearing that first record and of theirs, and, and he would sing low on some parts and then sing high on other parts and, and, and same thing on, you know, from song to song. And, you know, I kind of felt like, I guess you did, that, that I was like, wow, you know, like, you know, you know, which, you know, which, which style is this? But it, that, it, it, it all is, you know, it's all part of what he does. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's, that would be my thing too, is, is in some similar kind of fashion. I don't want to compare myself to, to him. I think he's, He's phenomenal, and, and, and you know. Uh, I, I but, can definitely, I can definitely hear some of the influences from Axel on the new album. Um, you did mention that you played drums before, and in a couple of the other bands that I, my brother Matt mentioned. And one of the biggest battles I read for you is converting a music skeptic 
when you when you're uh, performing live. I mean, how difficult is it to really get people excited about what Charm City Devils is doing? Because you guys have played with a lot of big bands, and when you first started out, I mean, it's really tough for an opening act to get everybody's attention when they're there to see, say, Guns N' Roses or Slash or Aerosmith. So how did you go about handling that? Yeah, I mean, we've been really fortunate. I mean, you know, we we tend to, uh, we, we do, we do, I think we do pretty well, man. I, you know, like, we, uh, we were just talking about this. Like, we can play with bands that are, I think, heavier than us and, and, and bands that are maybe lighter than us or slightly outside of our, our uh, wheelhouse, as they say, and, and uh, still, you know, convert people over. And and I don't I don't know what it is or you know what what factors into that, you know. But uh, but yeah, I, I love that challenge. I love you know, and I think it's, a lot of it stems from you know just being an unknown band. And the reason that this all has, has really come up in the in the the interviews or whatever is uh, is that we over the summer we played with um play with the, the winery dogs and all those guys are like super you know talented crazy musicians you know up there on the stage you got mike portnoy and billy sheehan and and richie Co- uh Coatsman up there and they're all virtuosos and and we're more of a straight straight ahead rock band you know so some of the audience out there they're like you know frustrated you know music school graduates or whatever and, and they're you know they're up there to see these guys do their incredible thing, you know. And a couple after a couple of those shows that we played, like I had people come up to me at the merch table and they were like, "Man, you know, I thought you guys were gonna suck, but you guys are fucking awesome." You know. <laughs> and I just thought it's the it's one of the funniest things that anybody have ever, you know has ever said to me. You know, after a, a set, you know, it's like like. Why? Why did you think we were going to suck? I mean, like, what? What preconceived notion? You know, why was that in, even in your head? But I, you know, I didn't ask. But uh, I, I, I thought it was cool that we turned some people on. You know, so, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's all a journey, and it's all, it's all good, man. I, I love getting out there and meeting, meeting people, and, and uh, having a good time. So when the band first started back in two thousand eight. You guys got on Crew Fest right away, uh, Nikki Six's label, Eleven Seven. Right. I mean, was that really easy for you guys, or a lot of bands would kill for that opportunity right off the bat? It was. Uh, it was surreal, man. It was like, you know, I expected every day to just wake up from this incredible dream. I mean, you know, I just, I, I, I couldn't believe, you know, what had happened. I mean, here's. A band that that I grew up on, you know, was a fan of, you know, I'd seen in concert, uh, you know, in arenas or whatever, and and uh, the way it unfolded was surreal as well. Like we, you know, I've, I've, I've had a couple record deals, and normally you have to, you know, you have to go up and you play for, you know, if you have the f- good fortune of having somebody interested in you from a record label, then you. Then you gotta, you know, go up and showcase for them at least a couple, you know, a couple of times or three times, four times, five times. You gotta keep going back, and play for this guy's boss, and then you gotta play for his boss, and you gotta play for his boss, you know. And you gotta convince, you know, the label at least, at least in the situations that I've I've been in prior to this. But this uh, getting the deal with with Nikki's label was was so different. And it was, you know, we were we were getting airplay from a demo of the song Let's Rock and Roll in our hometown. And I just sent off an email. I actually sent off a bunch of emails to uh, contacts that I had made in the, in the you know, music business. And all those people, none of, the, none, of the, none of those people got back with me. Um, but I didn't know anybody up at 11.7, and I sent the, just a blind email up. and said, hey, this, this, my name is John Allen. This is what I've done in the past. This is uh, what I've got going on now. You know, 98 Rock here in Baltimore is playing the song. You know, it, it's apparently doing really well. And uh, they checked up on me. They called the station, and the station told them, yeah, you know, song, and people were reacting to the song. So, you know, it just was, went through from there. Like, they, they called me and, and uh, were like, you know, we want you to come to New York and have a meeting. And I, I went to New York and, 
by the end of the lunch, the you know the CEO of the label was like, okay, let's do it. Let's let's uh, let's do this deal. And I I shook the guy's hand on a street corner, and the next week he named Nikki Six the the president of the label, and and Nikki was like, yeah, man, I love this band. And, you know, Aerosmith, ACDC, you know, Dirty Rock Band, and and it went from there. I I, I couldn't believe we just had it. You know, we we had got a deal from from a handshake on a New York City uh, street corner. I mean, it just never happens like that, and and it did in this case. It was fantastic. I mean, and then from there, you know, they they put us on Proof Fest, opening the main stage for Motley Crue, Godsmack, Here the Dead Man, Drowning Pool, and and us, we were we were the first band on the on the main stage that year, and I mean, I I had never sung in front of the band on any kind of tour at all. That, that was my first experience. Like right out of the gate, I was thrown thrown in the deep end of the pool, man. <laughs> you know? But uh, yeah. hey, you know, it was awesome. Yeah. and it's just all from just sending an email to a, a label, taking a chance. The worst I could say is no. That's what I always tell everybody. You're never going to know any answer unless you try and the worst anybody can say is no and in this case it was yeah. a very big yes yeah i mean you you know one of the things that that uh that you have to not be afraid of is failing i mean that, that's the thing you know you can't be afraid of failing you can't be afraid of failing in public i mean you, like you said the email i mean we're in a new we're in a new era here you know there's there's but i don't think there's ever been any kind of rules as far as the music business goes there's never one set path and the how to get signed and how to how to make it in the business. You know, you, everybody sometimes I think needs, needs to find their own path, but you know the basics are always the same. You gotta you gotta you know write great songs and, and uh, if you're a rock band, you gotta you gotta be a kick-ass live rock band. You know to to get you know people excited and interested in you. You know. Yeah, we're talking to John Allen, lead vocalist for Charter City Devils. Like I said, you got a brand new album coming out, Battles. I want to ask you uh, a couple questions about a couple tracks on the album. One of the tracks, actually one of my favorite tracks on the album is Every Day. So can you tell me a little bit more about that track on that album? Uh, Every Day was a song that lyrically I, I had written about. Um, I was actually, I had a day job uh, for a little while where I was a courier, and I had seen a... Uh, you know, a streetwalker, a prostitute, young girl. It was like a few days before Christmas, man, and it just it was it was in the morning and it was starting to snow out and I was I was it just hit me, man. It hit me like kinda hard, like fuck, man, like this poor girl, you know, like and I started to to wonder what her life was like, you know, and that that really kinda started the the lyrical process of that song. And then and, and first verse really about her and then the second verse is about is about things I saw as a as a as a kid growing up in East Baltimore there was there was a, a main like shopping district on Eastern Avenue in East Baltimore. My uncle owned a little little store and I remember hanging out at that store and, and you know the, the the characters that I used to see on the avenue there were were just etched in my brain, you know, at a young age, and I, you know, I, I kind of talk about, you know, a couple of them in the second verse, and that song is, you know, about, like, yeah, you know, I guess just humanity and, and, and different people and different walks of life, and, and the struggles that they, that they go through, and the second verse focuses on a guy who was, a gentleman who was blind, and he used to stand outside of my, my uncle's store, and and sell pencils out of a old cigar box, man. And he would stand there, and he he'd talk to himself, and he'd yell at himself, and berate himself. And I, you know, this poor guy, man. You know, like the existence, you know, what kind of existence he 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 had to, to deal with throughout his life. And that's uh, between him and the and the the, the, the streetwalker at the first verse. I, the song kind of, you know, is just talking about you know the meaning of life and whether there really is a God and and you know how you know my questioning of that you know and, and and you know how uh how this could go on and, and you know what we're taught at a young age and whatever being like brought up Catholic as I was and and uh, so you know the, the lyric uh, the lyric kind of drove that song. 
Another track on the album I got to talk to you about and, and I want to learn a little bit more about is God's Gonna Cut You Down. Compared to what the rest of the album sounds like, then all of a sudden you get to this song and then it's like, what is this? So, John, right, tell us right. a little bit about this song. Well, God's Gonna Cut You Down is, is really a suggestion by our bass player. It's a, it's actually a cover of a cover. Um, uh, Johnny Cash did a version of this a few years ago and, and uh, we... Uh, it, I know that it goes back to Odetta. She was a gospel singer in the in, a, in the 50s. And I kind of, I, I really listened to her version more than the Johnny Cash version and, and decided to kind of arrange it and amp it up and make it kind of a chunky, kind of high-energy rocker. And and um, I don't know, I just, I just kind of pictured the song as like uh, Metallica does gospel or something. I don't know. You know, it's not, and I just, uh, it's, a, it's a fun track, man. It's a fun track to uh, to play live, and, and it was a fun track to record. Well, I mean, the key is you make, I mean, if you're going to do a cover song, and I'll, and I'll say this, you got to make it your own. And I think that's something that you guys have done well, is when you guys cover a track, you guys make it your own. And it always sounds like it's a completely different track. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I kind of feel like, especially with, I'm a, I'm a student of, uh, I mean, I love the history of rock music and, you know, where it comes from, the blues and gospel and country and, and everything. And, and uh, you know, like a song like that, like God's Gonna Cut You Down or even Man of Sorrow, these are these are songs that have been around for a very long time. And, and I kind of feel like music is kind of a living, breathing, kind of changing, ever-changing thing. And, and uh, you know, to to kind of put a little bit of a twist on it, or or our our you know our view of it, is not a bad thing. I mean, like uh, I don't know, I Anaconda Star was just kind of a watershed moment for the band, and, and uh, you know, we definitely took that song in a different direction from its bluegrass root, and it seemed to really resonate with with people. And uh, you know, I hope that I hope that uh, God's going to cut you down to the same thing. Let's go ahead and talk about the first track that we opened up the interview with, Shots. This will be the last track I ask you about because I've I read some stuff, and this seems to be a pretty personal track for yourself and the band. So sure. what, it's what, kind of like, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but I mean, the way the song plays, you would think it's like a, a party song, right? But it right. isn't. Yeah, I mean, like, outwardly, song with the, with the chorus, the way it sounds, yeah, it sounds like it's just a, a call to to get to, you know, go out and get fucked up. But it's really, um, if you dig a little deeper and listen to the, or read the, the verse line lyrics, it's really a, a me talking to a friend of mine who's, uh, who's struggled for a long time. And I've I've, uh, I've tried to help him over the years in, in many different ways. I've tried to be subtle. I've tried to be direct. I finally said, you know what? I'm, this song is going to be an open letter, you know, albeit a little angry, to him, and hopefully it'll 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 wake him up a little bit or something, or or it'll, or maybe it'll just piss him off. But in, in any event, maybe it'll get him, you know, to to seek out some help and to try and get his his addiction issues under control in some some form or fashion. You know, like and I care about him. I hope uh I hope he, he he you know comes through it, and I, you know I want him to to be around in quite a few years. I mean. I, I lost another friend uh, a few years ago. Actually, the day we released the last record is when he died, and I, and we think it was a result of his uh, his addiction. And I don't want to I don't want to bury another another friend. Hard Rockology Radio. We're talking with John Allen of Charm City Devils, and that was about the song "Shots," the first single off the new album "Battles." Well, I guess well, this is a question that we always ask our guests is a uh, spinal tap moment. Is there anything you want to share with us on the show? I've had a lot of, like, they're not even spinal tap moments because it never happened in the movie, but I've had a lot of moments where, um, in the last couple of tours, where I've been so exhausted, and, and I'll, I'll hit a note on stage where I, I completely feel like I'm going to, I'm, I'm, that's it, I'm going to completely, like, fall over and pass out, where... The room starts going black, you know. Somehow, I kind of I pull it back together and and uh, and I come back to consciousness. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, 
I had a vocal teacher years ago that told me if you hit a note really true, man, that you could you could uh, totally pass out. And I've, I've had a couple of those moments where it's like it's the best high like I've ever experienced, man. And uh, but and, and you know I can it's it's crazy, man. Like a couple of the shows on the Winery Dogs tour, like I'm like okay, that's it. Tonight, tonight, I'm falling off the front of the stage, man. <laughs> I there you go, there you go, man. It's that's that's, that's his final time moment. He hit the ultimate no and he blacked out. It's the Charm City that's Devils it. orgasmic it's, moment. Yeah, Charm City that's Devils right. orgasmic moment. That's <laughs> right. It's 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 resonated. It's just you know you can hear the resonance. Yeah. In, in my skull. In my skull. <laughs> All right, John. Well, thanks for uh, being part of the Hard Rockology Radio. So, uh, what's going on for the band the rest of the year? You got obviously the album's coming out in a couple of weeks, September 23rd on VN Records, a great label. A lot of great bands on that label. Uh, I would imagine you're going to follow it up with a lot of touring. Uh, recently, you were on the West Coast. Any plans to come back around to the West Coast again? Yeah, I hope so, man. We we. Uh... Being an East Coast band, we have a hard time getting out there, uh, you know, in a, on a regular basis. But uh, I really hope we get back out there because we uh, we love, you know, getting to to California and um, you know all points in between. We've had a lot of recent success in the in the mountains, you know, in Boise and Denver and and uh, Spokane, and so we're you know ho- hopefully we'll uh, we'll get back out there real soon. I mean. The rest of the year, it's going to be touring, 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 and radio shows. And so, uh, you know, hit us up, hit us up on Facebook to, to get updates about the the shows, and and uh, write to us, man. We we always write back. All right, John. Like we do with all our guests on the Hard Rockology Show, why don't you go ahead and close out this interview by introducing another track of your brand new album, Battles? Sure. This next track is called Want, man. This is a uh, this is all the, the band right here, man. We uh, just started jamming on this cool riff, and and uh, the song popped out. It's one of those ones that, that were written like in 10 minutes. So uh, enjoy. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. 